Hey, what's good everyone? Back again with another video. And today we are looking at the Razer Deathadder V3 Hyperspeed. Now we are at a different setup today. You'll have to excuse me. It's a bit scuffed. It is like way too hot in California right now. Sweating. I got the sleeve on because I'm sweating. So yeah, I'm just trying to try to get through this ASAP. Today we will be reviewing the mouse and reviewing the dynamic sensitivity that they've added to Razer Synapse for this mouse. If you're wondering what is dynamic sensitivity, basically it's Razer's version of Roxel. I'll just be basically reviewing it and then giving Razer some tips on how to improve that part of their software. So yeah, if you've seen my videos, you know I love the Death Adder V3. I have been maining the 8K version, which is the wired version, instead of the Death Adder V3 Pro Faker Edition. I did put the Faker Edition away just because it's been creaking a lot. I want to keep that mouse in good condition, you know, because it is kind of a collector's item. And I did main the EC2 before I mained any of the Death Adders, so I am excited to see that they did make a shape that is supposedly similar to the EC2, so I decided to check it out. Now, quickly going over everything, the quality is very improved on the Death Adder V3 Hyperspeed. I think it was already improved on the Death Adder V3 8K, which is why I switched to it. No quality issues here. Clicks are all great. The scroll wheel is good. It is looser still on the wired 8K version, but I haven't had any accidental actuations like I did on the Pro. I did have them on the white Pro that I used to have a long time ago. I sold that one and then I got the Faker Edition. The Faker Edition didn't have any accidental scroll wheels either. This one has a new scroll wheel. It feels like the Viper V2 Pro scroll wheel, if you guys remember that. It is a lot notchier, it's not loose like the Death Adder V3. It's good that Razer learned their lesson instead of trying to continue with this kind of wheel, they just went back to what works, you know, the Viper V2 Pro, nothing wrong with it, just go back to that kind of encoder. And the clicks are also a bit sharper. Now the side buttons is something where I do prefer the old one. The only reason why is because they use a softer actuation click on the side buttons here. And I think they were perfect here, they were nice, sharp, you couldn't feel the plastic moving. I think the actuation of the side button switch is a little bit too light here, and I do feel a bit of the play with the switches. More so on the pros travel, not on the pre-travel. As for the scroll wheel click, I won't really test that, you know, it just works. I don't know who even uses a scroll wheel click, man. The coding is the same on the Death Adder V3 wired 8K and the hyperspeed. The unfortunate part is that it's not the white version of the coding that they've used on the Viper V3 Pro, which is like the best coding I've used on any mouse so far. So it is a bit disappointing to see that that coding isn't here and they didn't really make the white version if you prefer white peripherals, which I do. So hopefully Razer can, you know, pick a back up on their consistency or at least provide us with white coding versions of the Hyperspeed and the Wired 8K version. I would very much appreciate that and just give us the option, you know? The skates are now large ones from the Viper V3 Pro and I like this change. You know, as someone who loves I love the EC2, I love the wide skates, but unfortunately they did mess that up with the charging dongle thing. Here on the original Death Adder V3, you might have seen these before. I don't like these, but you know, once they break in, they're fine to me. I do finally prefer these though, I just really like the way that big skates feel after you break them in. You get to feel a lot of your mouse pad, and it feels like your mouse pad is a more meaningful decision that you make to, you know, get your setup to feel how you want it to. As for the shape, me personally, out of all these three, I used to be a huge person on the EC2, EC2CW. Fortunately, this is a bit too heavy for me, especially as a low sense player. You know, I started getting shoulder pains because this is kind of a brick. If you play too low sense, you can't really use something that's 78 grams. So now I've fully gotten used to the Death Adder V3 shape. It's just my favorite ergo shape right now. I just feel the most consistent on it. I've used it the most. I know I like the thorn, but you know, just Razer is just so reliable in terms of quality, in terms of performance that I've gravitated towards this. So yeah, I wholeheartedly recommend this mouse still. It is very cheap at $70. And the only problem is the wire, but I mean, you see here I'm using the Zowie Bungie and yeah, there's no problems. The only nitpick I have is Razer needs to fix this goddamn cable because I don't know, there's all these weird like twists in it. After you use it for a while, I think the shielding is too wide for the internal wiring. A company like Endgame Gear is another company that still makes wired mice. They make the wired 8K mice, they make the wired 1K mice, and their cables don't have this. So yeah, Razer, please make a white Death Adder V3 8K, make a white Viper V3 Pro 8K, wait, no, Viper V3 8K, Death Adder V3 8K, white edition, white coating with the wire and improve the wire. Also, maybe add the stress relief and this would be perfect. But yeah, going back to the hyperspeed, which is what the review is about, I don't like the shape as much as the EC2, so I've kind of ranked it as... Death Hunter V3 my favorite, and then EC2, and then the hyperspeed. Don't get me wrong, if you can get used to or you like the EC2 shape, you can certainly get used to the hyperspeed, and the hyperspeed is about the closest thing I'd say to a modern EC2. 
there is the Pulse Light, Pulse Light, Pulsar X Light V3 medium, but I don't like Pulsar mice because their plastic feels so cheap. I feel like I can throw this into the wall and it'll make a hole in the wall and the mouse will be fine. Whereas a Pulsar mouse, I can like smash it with my hands. This is on the better end of quality. Thankfully, I don't think I can throw this and put a hole in the wall, but it doesn't feel like a Toys R Us toy like a Pulsar mouse does. So highly recommend if you want something similar to the EC2. Why do I prefer the EC2 still? Well, I will tell you the shape is a lot wider on the thumb groove, as you can see here, and on your pinky rest side. So these parts are very wide and the grip width gets very thin and that gives you the contrast that perfectly fits a claw grip. Here on the hyperspeed, you see that Razer tries to make like one clean line, basically. It is curved, but it's not as outwards in the back like the C2. So basically you can think of hyperspeed as an EC2 with a thinner butt. So if you are like claw palm where you really want to just put your palm there and then claw it with your fingers, that grip is just not as good, but it's not too bad. You definitely feel the thinness though of where you want to put your palm. If you're just claw or knuckle claw, then this is a better option. Or if you fingertip, I know it's not popular to fingertip ergo mice, but it is a very good feeling in my opinion when I do fingertip grip. So yeah, the shape personally not for me, because I do claw palm with the back of the mouse, so I need something a bit chunkier. They decided to make the back hump thinner on this mouse than the EC2. But I don't think that should take away from the review of the mouse. It's just me subjectively not liking this shape as much. But I know there's a market for this. So I do recommend this mouse. So I do recommend the Death Adder V3 8K and the Hyperspeed. Right now I do not recommend the EC2. It is just a bit too heavy. It's how he needs to finally catch up and update. And just a disclaimer, I will be putting affiliate links if you want to help out the channel. I know in previous videos I've made a point that I don't put affiliate links and I buy all my products. I still bought this product and I still bought this product. But in multiple videos in the comments people have been saying like, oh I bought this product on your recommendation. And it was a good recommendation, so thank you. So. I'm just being a free salesman at that point for various brands. Don't let me be a free salesman. At least let me get like what the 10% in pennies that they're giving for affiliate links. And just to maintain integrity, I will only put affiliate links for products I actually recommend and that I mentioned in the video. That being the Hyperspeed, that being the Wired 8K, and not the EC2 because I don't recommend this anymore. So the next part of this video will be reviewing the Dynamic Sensitivity or Roxel competitor in Razer's Synapse software. Here in the main menu of Synapse, you just see all the default stuff. I don't like Synapse because they give you these ads. Like, let me just use my software, man. Go to the hyperspeed mouse and you see all these setup things that, you know, you've probably seen if you use Razer software before, but there is this last dynamic sensitivity setting. It's in the advanced tab. The dynamic sensitivity feature is something that's only on this mouse, the Focus Pro 26K updated sensor and it's coming to the Viper V3 Pro, but it's not coming to the middle generation, which is the Focus Pro 30K. I don't understand why there must be some kind of hardware limitation, but all I'm gonna say is it feels very snaky if they come out with a new Death Adder V3 with the newest sensor and then they put dynamic sensitivity on that and not on this. But actually at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because I'll get to it. You can turn on dynamic sensitivity and here you have, if you use Roxel, some familiar curves for what basically just give you a default form of mouse acceleration. Here are three default curves that exist on Roxel. Classic, natural, jump, and then custom. I do have a custom curve, but that's not relevant right now. So it's very cool that Razer is trying to bring dynamic sensitivity or acceleration or Roxel, whatever you want to call it, to the wider audience by putting it on the Razer Synapse software itself. It is very cool, but I don't think this is a good way to do it because you're just going to scare off people and confuse them. So most people are going to see this and be like, what the hell? They're going to try it, right? Well, if you've seen one of the hundreds of, oh, I tried Roxel for 30 days and this happened videos on YouTube, then you will know what happened. Specifically, I would like to credit Optimum Tech and Viscose, two content creators I really enjoy. In their Roxel videos, they tried Roxel, and but you can see basically what they both came down to is that the micro adjustments are not consistent enough. So if you see on these default curves that the mouse will start accelerating very quickly within your micro adjustments. Let's still the jump curve, but you'll see as soon as I start moving my mice with these, then boom, we're accelerating. Now that's a problem, right? Because one of the fundamental things in Roxel is that you need to have this input offset thing, right? So if I go to Roxel and re-enable it, and you can see it starts tracking my mouse on this software rather than Razer, you can see that I have an offset of 35 on this Roxel curve. Now, how does this help me? It's my micro adjustments. 
but you can see my mouse movements won't start accelerating until I reach this offset. You can see this offset helps because it lets me micro adjust in this range of the graph and it'll only start accelerating once I swipe my mouse wider. Something like that, right? This is how you get a more intuitive feeling curve. So if you haven't used Roxel, you're probably very confused right now. And, and basically you should be, and that's my criticism of Razer, is that they need to do a, a lot of work to explain what is going on in this thing to the average user, right? Average user sees this, turns it on, they have this book button, right? A classic exponentially increased sensitivity during faster motion, blah, 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 traditional Windows acceleration. Average user is going to read this and be like, Windows acceleration? Hell no, I don't want that. Everyone knows it's bad, right? And then natural, predictable cursor movement with a capped maximum sensitivity jump uses low sensitivity while moving slowly, instantly shifting to high sensitivity during quick flicks. Ideal for every blah, 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 blah. Basically that, right? That's cool and all, but these curves are useless because they're default curves. And a lot of what a lot of people will tell you with Roxel or any acceleration is don't copy someone's curve which I kind of agree with, but if you are a beginner, you kind of have to copy someone's curve and then just morph it around how you feel in game, right? The way I see it is this, there's three things that you need to configure with a Roxel curve. It is, what is your input offset, right? Do I want my micro adjustments to be very narrow and start accelerating faster? Well, then I'm gonna have a lower offset. If that doesn't feel good, you change it to a higher offset, right? Second thing you need to take care of is what is the cap? At what point does acceleration stop? Cause you see this graph, like theoretically it's going up infinitely forever, right? If I don't put a cap on it, then when is it gonna stop? And also it's gonna be very strange when I don't know what my maximum acceleration is, right? You need to get that feel for it. So I have a cap and the input, right? You can have a cap on the multiplier and that's what Razer does in their software, right? Their caps are multipliers which they conveniently also don't explain to the user very well. It says ratio of output to input. I think a more intuitive way is just to say sense multiplier, right? But yeah, they should explain the user that and give us control over that. They don't. And the last thing you need to take care of is how fast is your acceleration gonna happen? If you do some quick math here, you see 50 minus 35, then 15 units of input speed is how fast my acceleration will kick in. So once I hit 35, once I get to 50, then it's gonna stop, right? Well, that's gonna go to about like 1.05, somewhere around there on this graph, right? At 50 right here. Well, what if I turn on my acceleration a lot, right? Okay, now it's going closer to 1.1. If I turn it up even more, then boom, it's super high now, right? Like 1.4 something, 1.3 something, right? So those are the three things you need to adjust according to yourself and how you play in game. And that's just something that Razer is just not showing you here at all. And I don't think that's a good thing. Right now, the information is so lacking on the software that you're just gonna jump in here. You're gonna read this. It says Windows Acceleration and you're gonna turn it off and it's probably gonna feel bad, right? For the offset reason I said earlier, Jump curve is like a simple band-aid fix because it does give you this kind of micro adjustment area. I think Optimum Tech did like jump curve the most, but still it has those glaring problems. Custom curve, you just move these dots is very, I don't know. I don't know how you expect someone who has never used Excel to come in here and just start drawing their own curve. Again, it's going to scare them. This looks like math class. People don't want to do math class. So they want a game. So they're just going to turn this off. Last thing, input speed count per MS. This depends on how fast you move your mouse, right? But it also depends on how the mouse is giving you input. And how does mouse give you input? It depends on your DPI, right? So if I have 1600 DPI, you can see here that if I swipe my mouse at 1600, I will reach 70. If I micro adjust, like pretty quickly I can get to 30, right? Well, what if I turn my DPI down to 800? Well, then something different is gonna happen, right? I'm swiping my mice around and I barely even get to 70. I can't even get to 30 with these fast micros, right? So Razer's doing another thing where they don't explain you enough is that if you change your DPI and use the same curve, your curve will be wildly different. This is something that is well documented in Roxel's FAQ. If you go to their Discord, you will see how to convert certain curves to different DPIs. This is just like information you have to give the user. I think this is kind of cool that it's on Synapse, but the fact that it's so unfriendly is kind of useless to everyone because if you already use Roxel, just keep using Roxel. If you don't use Excel, then just don't use this. If you don't use Excel and you want to learn Excel, you should probably just use Roxel. And like for the last like two, humans on the planet remaining that want to use Roxel on LAN. And to my knowledge, this is the only way 
And I say this to reference to Sarah Frags, who's one of the most well-known players of Valorant or any game in general that use Roxel. To my knowledge, Sarah Frags does use Roxel, but when they went to the Valorant GC land last year in 2023, they were not able to use Roxel on that tournament. Do I know the reason? I don't, but I'd have to assume that the tournament operators didn't allow it to be installed on the land PCs. But if you have this, you can make your own curve and it goes to your profile that then goes on your mouse in this case, right? So that goes back to my point. This software is very unfriendly and only works if you already know Roxo or another acceleration software. So at the end of the day, it only helps like two people in the world, like Sarah Frags and I don't know, maybe just Sarah Frags if they wanted to go to LAN and continue using some form of Roxo. So yeah, Razor has some work to do here. I think, you know, you need some more documentation. You need to tell people what input speed is. You need to tell people that input speed depends on DPI. Ratio of output to input, just say sense multiplier. Also give us an option to set the maximum multiplier. Give us the option to set the cap to input speed rather than just a multiplier. Give us a a option to change how fast the acceleration increases basically in this one the slope of the graph and natural how high how fast the graph goes high and give us the option to put an input offset for these just to make every graph just feel like an actual usable graph i don't know anyone who actually uses these no offset graphs so yeah cool feature definitely needs some work to make it more usable for the most amount of people as for the rotation this is kind of cool I think Random Frank P in his original Death Adder V3 Pro review said that the mouse felt tilted a bit, so they went into Roxel, which actually has this feature. Somewhere here, I don't remember. He used Roxel to change the angle of the mouse and it felt fine for him afterwards. This is obviously a lot more accessible and cooler to the user because it's kind of intuitive as to what it does. Again, my criticisms of dynamic sensitivity is just it's just not intuitive to the user. It doesn't explain enough. It's just too scary for the average user and I find that no one's going to use this really. 